question over here is 100 ml of n by 5 naoh will neutralize 100 ml of n by 5 naoh strong base will neutralize 0.062 grams of HRBO3, 0.185 grams of HRBO3, 1.24 grams of HRBO3 and 0.031 grams of H3BO3 basically. So over here, it's the boric acid given to us which is weak mono basic acid. So basically it is mono basic weak acid or weak mono basic acid. Okay. Now, what is the N factor if I calculate for boric acid? See, for an acid, the N factor, Y over here, basically just have a stop. Okay. So, Y over here, I'm talking about N factor. Because over here, N factor will be utilized in calculating the amount of boric acid used to neutralize 100 ml of N by 5 NaOH. Okay, are you getting my point? So, first of all, I am going to talk about the N factor of boric acid. Okay, because over here we are going to talk about equivalents. And for equivalents, we actually should know the N factor. That is the actual case. So, if I talk about the N factor for H3BO3, it's an acid. For an acid, the N factor is the number of H positive ions replaced by one mole of an acid. The acid given to us over here is weak acid. It is basically a weak acid. So, it is not going to completely dissociate. If it is not completely dissociating into H positive ion, the N factor for H3BO3 will be equals to 1. The N factor for H3BO3 will be equals to 1. That's the actual case. Okay. Now, let X grams of, let us assume, that X grams of H3BO3 neutralize, neutralize 100 ml of N by 5 NaOH. Cool? Okay. So, what we can say over here that equivalent of H3BO3, equivalence of H3BO3 is equals to equivalent is equals to equivalence of NaOH. Now, what is equivalent of H3BO3? Equivalence of H3BO3 is the given mass upon equivalent weight. Given mass upon equivalent weight. And if I talk about equivalence of NaOH, it will be NB for NaOH, which is basically 1 by 5 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000 because it's 100 ml that's why now equivalent weight if i want to calculate out so equivalent weight basically it is equals to the molar mass divided by n factor now what is the molar mass of h3bo3 it is approximately 61.8 grams so we'll take it as 62 grams so, molar mass is 62, n factor is 1. So, it is x divided by 62 and this 1 will go in numerator multiplied by 1 which is equals to 1 by 5 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000. Now, when you will calculate the value of x over here, it will be 62 divided by 5 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000. So, it becomes, when you will calculate this whole expression out, you will get your answer as 1.24 grams. So, basically 1.24 grams of H3BO3 will be actually required to neutralize 100 ml of N by 5 NaOH. Therefore, option number C is the right answer to this question. Question is, find the pH of an aqueous solution of 1 molar ammonium formate. Find the pH of an aqueous solution of 1 molar ammonium formate assuming complete dissociation. pKa of formic acid is 3.8 and pKb of ammonium hydroxide is 4.8. See over here ammonium formate. Basically the ammonium formate is what? It is the salt of weak acid and weak base. Ammonium formate is the salt of weak acid and weak base. Now, weak acid is 
फॉर्मिक एसिड एच सी ओ ओ एच एंड वीक बेस इज अमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड एन एच फोर ओ एच सो बेसिकली इट विल बी एन एच फोर एच सी ओ टू दिस इज अमोनियम फॉर्मेट या सो फॉर दी सॉल्ट ऑफ वीक एसिड एंड वीक बेस पी एच इज इक्वल्स टू सेवन प्लस बिकॉज ओवर हेयर वी आर एज्यूमिंग द कंप्लीट डिसोसिएशन टू सो इट विल बी सेवन प्लस हाफ पी के ए माइनस पी के बी सो इट बिकम्स इक्वल्स टू सेवन प्लस हाफ थ्री पॉइंट एट माइनस फोर पॉइंट एट सो इट इज सेवन माइनस हाफ विच इज इक्वल्स टू सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव दैट इज द केस so option number c is the right answer to this question so basically we need to find out the ph of the salt of weak acid and weak base so its ph is equals to it's the direct expression to calculate out the ph for weak acid and weak base ph for the salt of weak acid and weak base 7 plus half pk minus pkb answer is 6.5 option number c is the absolute right answer to this question Question over here is the compound that does not have a pi bond. The compound that does not have a pi bond. So it's sulfur dioxide, okay. SF six oxygen, SO three sulfur trioxide, okay. So over here, which particular compound does not have a pi bond? If I just draw the Lewis structure for all of these, we'll actually find out that which do not have a pi bond. So sulfur. Okay, a member of group sixteen having six valence electron, one, two, three, four, five, six. Basically, I'm having two oxygen atoms surrounded. Okay, these are two oxygen atoms surrounded. Oxygen atoms also belongs to group sixteen having six valence electron, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, and five, six. Okay, now sulfur, it is short of two electrons to complete its octet. as well as oxygen is also short of two electrons to complete its octet so what they are going to have they are going to form a pi bond okay they what they are actually going to have they are going to actually share their electrons they are actually going to share their valence electrons okay forming a covalent bond between them okay so there will be sharing of electrons going to take place and while doing so there will be a formation of pi bond when i'm talking about sulfur dioxide now sulfur it is an exception to an octet rule sulfur having empty 3d orbital can expand its octet to more than 8 electrons that is the case so over here this is basically the lewis dot structure for sulfur dioxide having two sigma and two pi bonds basically if i just talk about the sulfur uh, structure of sulfur dioxide what i'm going to have i'll just go for the formal charges and basically then i will be having double bond over here positive charge over here and negative charge over here okay and yeah it will be having a resonating structure basically so now double bond over here and yes positive charge over here fine and it's this 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 in negative charge so what we are saying that the pi bond is actually between the three atoms oxygen sulfur and oxygen so if i just talk about the resonance hybrid if i just talk about the resonance hybrid so it is kind of like this you can say for sulfur dioxide but this is what i have gone in a very very detailed thing for sulfur dioxide a very very detailed thing for sulfur dioxide basically okay so this is what we can have that means i mean to say that the pi bond it is present between three atoms oxygen sulfur and oxygen so yes the sulfur dioxide it is having a pi bond but also i said you one thing that sulfur it actually violates the octet rule having empty 3d orbital so it can expand its octet for more than 8 electrons also so if i just talk about sulfur dioxide in a very very basic term i'll say it has two pi bonds and two sigma bonds okay so this these are the formal charges a negative charge over here minus 1 and plus 1 so these are the formal charges present on sulfur and oxygen atom and i hope that you know it very well so this was a basic 
a deeper explanation for sulfur dioxide structure okay now if i just talk about sf6 okay again sulfur okay fluorine it is a monovalent atom basically having six fluorine atoms surrounding the sulfur central atom sulfur is having six valence electrons basically so if it is having six valence electrons basically so over here the structure for sf6 will be s f6 like this an octahedral structure for sf6 like this so over here if i just talk about the number of valence electron in case of sulfur the central atom it is 12 electrons and yeah it can hold those 12 electrons no no issue so basically over here in option number b i do have only the presence of sigma bond there is no presence of pi bond so the compound that does not have a pi bond is sf6 if i talk about oxygen o2 molecule the structure of o2 molecule is like this this is the basically i'm talking about the lewis dot structure okay so these two oxygen atom they are going to share their electrons just to fulfill their octet and hence there will be one sigma bond and one pi bond talking about sulfur trioxide over here so basically it's one bond with this the other one with this the other one with this okay sulfur is having six valence electron that i told you and oxygen 2 is having six valence electron basically so if i just talk about its structure it will look like this only so basically this is the structure for sulfur trioxide in a same way we'll be explaining the structure of sulfur trioxide the way i explained for sulfur dioxide there is addition of one more oxygen atom to it nothing else so if i just talk about the structure what i'm finding is that for sulfur trioxide it's three sigma and three pi bonds located hence the compound that does not have a pi bond it is only and only sf6 it is only and only sf6 okay Hence, option number B is the right answer to this question. The question over here is, yeah, the question is assuming that Hund's rule is violated, the bond order and magnetic nature of the diatomic molecule B two is what? We need to actually find out the bond order, okay, and the magnetic nature of the diatomic molecule B two. We need to assume that the Hund's rule. Hund's rule has been violated. What do you mean by what Hund's rule actually states? Hund's rule states that every orbital of a particular subshell, okay, it will be singly filled with the electron before we actually start the pairing. Before we actually start the pairing of the electrons in the orbital. okay so first of all what we have to do each and every orbital will be singly filled with the electron having the same spins after all the orbitals of that subshell has been filled singly with the same spins then the pairing of the electrons is going to start but over here we need to assume that the hunch rule this particular rule is been violated so what will be the electronic configuration of b2 then how many electrons are present in b2 number of electrons if i just talk about so it is actually 10 electrons okay because the atomic number of boron is 5 so if we want to calculate out the number of electron present in b2 it will be 5 into 2 which is 10 electrons so electronic configuration keeping the thing in a mind that the hunch rule is violated so it will be sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 it's then pi 2p pi 2p x2 pi 2p y0 okay if hunch rule was not assumed to be violated then the electronic configuration would have been pi 2p x1 and pi 2p y1 but over here the hunch rule has been violated so it will be that means pairing will be done first only initially only we'll be doing the pairing of the orbital so over here two electrons clear now all the electrons over here in the orbital they are they are paired 
none of the orbital is actually singly filled none of the electron is unpaired present so over here i'll say that the magnetic nature of the diatomic molecule b2 is diamagnetic hence option number c and d they are out of the race we'll now talk about the bond order now the bond order is equals to number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbital minus number of electrons in the anti bonding molecular orbital divided by 2 so number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital it is 2 and 2 4 into 6 6 minus 4 divided by 2 it is actually equals to 2 by 2 which is equals to 1 so the bond order is 1 and the magnetic nature is diamagnetic hence option number a is the right answer to this question question over here is 56 kg of nitrogen gas and 10 kg of hydrogen gas are mixed to produce ammonia gas calculate the amount of ammonia gas formed assume the reaction goes to completion n2 in the gaseous state plus twice of h2 in the gaseous state gives us twice of ammonia in the gaseous state basically so over here we need to calculate the amount of ammonia formed when we are mixing 56 kg of nitrogen and 10 kg of hydrogen gas okay so over here we are given with the equation okay from this particular equation what i infer out is that one mole of nitrogen one mole of nitrogen reacts with one mole of nitrogen reacts with 3 moles of hydrogen 3 moles of hydrogen okay one mole of nitrogen gas reacts with 3 moles of hydrogen gas i'm talking about the stoichiometry i'm talking this particular statement from the stoichiometry of the reaction now one mole of nitrogen gas means how many grams one mole of nitrogen gas i'm talking about it is equals to 28 grams One mole of nitrogen gas is equals to twenty eight grams, and one mole of hydrogen gas is equals to how many grams? It is equals to two grams. That is the case. So twenty eight grams of nitrogen reacts with reacts with three into two grams of hydrogen gas. that means 28 grams of nitrogen reacts with 6 grams reacts with 6 grams of hydrogen gas okay okay so if 20 if 28 grams of nitrogen gas reacts with 6 grams of hydrogen gas this we have found out from the this we have actually find out from the stoichiometry basically So twenty-eight grams of nitrogen gas reacts with six grams of hydrogen gas. Therefore, fifty-six. So it's fifty-six kg given to us. Okay, it's fifty-six kg given to us basically. And if I just convert twenty-eight grams to twenty-eight kg, so I'll divide it by one thousand. Okay. So basically, it will be therefore fifty-six kg. so first of all i'll convert 28 grams to 28 kg okay 28 grams to kilogram i am going to change it so it's 28 divided by 1000 kg of nitrogen reacts with 6 upon 1000 kg of hydrogen gas therefore 56 kg of nitrogen gas reacts with Six upon one thousand, six upon one thousand. This will be coming in the denominator twenty eight by thousand. So it will be multiplied by twenty eight, and thousand will go up. Multiplied by fifty six. So thousands cancel with thousand. Twenty eight ones are twenty eight twos are. So it becomes equals to twelve kg of. hydrogen gas this means that 56 kg of nitrogen gas actually reacts with 12 kg of hydrogen gas okay now 
8 grams of nitrogen reacted with 6 grams of hydrogen. This we find out from the stoichiometry. Now in the question we are given with 56 kg of nitrogen. So 56 kg of nitrogen reacts with 12 kg of hydrogen. But in the question we are only given with 10 kg of hydrogen. We over here are given with a mixture of 56 kg of nitrogen, 10 kg of hydrogen to produce a mixture of ammonia gas. But what we find out that 56 kg of nitrogen actually requires 12 kg of hydrogen. 12 kg of hydrogen which means that this hydrogen is actually the limiting reagent. Hydrogen is actually the limiting reagent. It will limit the amount of product formed. It will limit the amount of product formed basically. So, the amount of product formed will be totally dependent on the amount of the limiting reagent. Because in actual thing, 56 kg of nitrogen requires 12 kg of hydrogen. In the question, we are given that 56 kg of nitrogen reacts with 10 kg of hydrogen. So, when these two mixtures, when these two particular amounts are mixed together, they produce ammonia. We need to calculate, we need to actually calculate the amount of ammonia formed. Since hydrogen gas is the limiting reagent, that means the product formed, ammonia gas formed, the amount of ammonia gas formed will be dependent on the amount of hydrogen gas. Okay. So, basically from the stoichiometry only I am talking about that 3 moles of 3 moles of hydrogen gas gives us 3 moles of hydrogen gas gives us 2 moles of ammonia gas. 2 moles of ammonia gas. Ammonia gas from the stoichiometry I am talking about. Now, 3 moles of hydrogen gas means 3 into 2 is equals to 6 grams of hydrogen gas gives us 2 into the molar mass if I talk about molar mass of ammonia. Now 1 mole of ammonia, 1 mole of NH3 is equals to 17 grams. Therefore 2 moles of ammonia will be equals to 2 into 17 grams which is equals to 34 grams of ammonia. That means over here we have calculated out 6 grams of hydrogen gas gives us 34 grams of ammonia gas. That means 6 by 1000 kg of hydrogen gas gives us or produces 34 divided by 1000 kg of ammonia gas. Absolutely right or not? Yes. Therefore, 10 kg of hydrogen gas, 10 kg of hydrogen gas, it will give us 34 divided by 1000 multiplied by 6, then 1000 goes in the numerator multiplied by 10. So, 1000 cancels with 1000 and when you will calculate this whole thing out, it's 340 divided by 6 kg of ammonia. So, you will just find this out and you will get your answer as 56.67 kg. Your answer will be 56.67 kg of ammonia produced. Therefore, we can say 10 kg of hydrogen gas produces 56.67 kg of ammonia gas. Hence, option number A is the best suited answer for this question.